Hey, what's going on guys? Vince Dunlap here, aka Real Estate Vince, and just want to welcome you guys back to another one of my episodes, okay? So uh, today, I'm going to hop right into it. Just wanted to talk about the uh, exclusive buyer agency agreement. Now, typically what this document does is it allows me to become a full-time advocate for you, okay? So uh, before signing this document, if we were to go look at a house together, I really wouldn't be able to tell you too many things that may possibly sway whether or not you would buy a home or not. I would, I would basically be there representing the seller. However, once you sign this document, um, I now become a full-time advocate for you, and it's balls to the wall, okay? So let's go ahead and hop into it, all right? So we're going to start at the very top where it says uh, who the agreement is between, and you see that top line where your name will go there, and the firm that I work for, which in this situation would be Keller Williams Ballantyne area, would go on the second line. Now, even though you're working with me, the agreement is between you and the firm, and that's why their name goes there. I'm an agent of the firm, okay? So we're going to move down to number one, where it says type of property. And if you look, you'll see you can choose between residential or commercial. And then right up under there where it says general location, we'll typically type in the uh, county as well as the surrounding areas, depending on your particular situation, okay? Uh, so moving down to number three, where you see the duration of agency, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, to the best of my knowledge, to my understanding, we are allowed to, uh, to push this out as long as a year, but typically uh, we do six months, okay? So anywhere from six months to a year is pretty standard on these contracts, okay? <clears throat> Agreements, sorry. So, uh, number four, where it says compensation of firm, if you look at A, A is asking for a non-refundable retainer fee. Uh, all I'll say about that is some agents ask for a retainer fee, other agents don't. Um, and each agent kind of has their own reasoning as to why he or she uh, will or will not ask for a retainer fee, okay? So if you come across one they do, just kind of ask them to justify why and um, should be good to go there, okay? Or you can just use me. All right. So if you look at 4B, um, this is where it says the buyer is agreeing to the uh, firm's fee. Essentially, what this is talking about is the uh, commission rate. Now, if you've listened to my earlier videos, you'll see where I told you that uh, the commission rate is uh, negotiable here in the uh, state of North Carolina. But typically, uh, the commission rate is about 6%. And the buyer gets half and the seller gets half. So I essentially will get 3% of the commission rate. Now, you as the buyer, you will not pay uh, the commission. Here in the state of North Carolina, the commission gets paid for by the seller, okay? But this is simply acknowledging uh, what we will get paid once we go to close. All right, so if you move down to number four, where you see subparagraph C, bowlegged number two, uh, you'll see a little line right there, and it's actually for a number. Typically, we put anywhere between 30 to 90, and what this is saying, depending on the number, we'll say 90 for our uh, second conversation. If after 90 days, if this agreement um, expires and we didn't find a property, and if you go find a home that I previously showed you, what this is saying is that I'm owed commission. Okay, and the reason for that, to the best of my knowledge, was that back in the day, a lot of clients would use real estate agents to have them show them properties that they had no intentions of buying. They would break the agreement and then they would go buy the property themselves to avoid uh, potential other fees. So that's kind of why this was added in there, okay? Down to number five, where it says other potential buyers. And essentially, what this is saying is that there are other people looking at some of these same houses. And here in Charlotte specifically at the moment, it's a seller's market. So if you see a home that's pretty hot that just came on the market, yeah, you could go home and think about it, but just understand that there are more agents there uh, that are showing these buyers homes who may possibly be interested enough to go ahead and put in an offer while you're home thinking about it, okay? Number six, where it says the uh, firm's duties. Once you looked up, by this time, that you come to the buyer agency agreement, you should have already gone with working with real estate agents. And this is pretty much just a summarization of working with real estate agents, okay? Number seven, where it says disclosure of buyer names and mailing address. During the uh, home buying process, there will be other people who will be a part of the process who will need some of your information depending on the services, okay? And that's essentially why we ask for your name and your mailing address, and it won't be used for, for anything else other than uh, depending on what service is being provided, okay? Number eight, where it says non-discrimination, that's pretty self-explanatory. 
Uh, same as number nine, where it says the buyer's duties. Once you've gone over the working with real estate agents, um, it'll be explained in that form as well. And this isn't me just trying to rush through it, but um, when you sit down and you talk to me, uh, we'll definitely go on this, go over this in a lot more detail. Okay. All right, number ten is a good one. Uh, where it says other professional advice. Essentially what this is saying is when it comes to real estate, we're expected to be subject matter experts. And for the most part, we'll know uh, pretty much everything real estate related when it comes to your home buying process. However, you're going to have questions that we're not going to be able to answer. So, you know, whether it be about your pre-approval or whether it be about a survey or an appraisal or whether it be about um, an inspection. And when you have those questions, we're going to ask you to go and talk to those particular subject matter experts, depending on the question. And especially when it comes to those financial questions, uh, we are prohibited by law to give you any sort of financial advice for the simple fact that we're not loan officers, okay? So, um, yes, we, we're loving the fact that you work with us, but if you got a question, uh, you're more than free to go ask others, okay? Also, right up under number 10, where you're going to see three uh, boxes that would ask for a checkmark. These are FYI documents that uh, your realtor should email to you at some point uh, to help you during the home buying process. And of those three, uh, you'll see the one in the middle where it says uh, questions and answers on home inspections. I always make it a point to point that one out to my clients because um, it basically gives you a heads up on what to look for when it's time for your inspection. And once we go on the contract and we set up the inspection date, if possible, I like to have my clients show up on the inspection because I've learned that being able to see it hands-on kind of helps smooth over the process. And if you kind of know what to look for already, it helps you out a ton, all right? So moving on to number 11, where it says home warranty. As a potential buyer, you have the option to buy a home warranty during the process. And if you choose to buy a home warranty, what number 11 is saying, if I were to put a dollar amount into that, uh, to that blank, that is basically saying that's how much of a fee you would owe me if I were to assist you and whoever you pick for your home warranty. Now, if you want to get a home warranty, I will help you with the process of trying to find one. However, I have never charged anybody for doing so. So um, when you work with me, you'll see a zero typed in that line. Personally, I simply don't ask for a fee when it comes for home warranty, okay? Number 12, where it says confidentiality of offers, okay? Essentially what this is saying is like, let's say we find a house. You like it, we put in an offer, the seller comes back and says, hey, uh, we have multiple offers, put in your highest and your best by Friday at 5 o'clock is what they do, okay? So what this is saying is that um, all they have to do is tell us that we have multiple offers. They are not obligated to tell us the terms of any of those offers, just that they have multiple offers. Now, they have the option to do so, but nine times out of 10, it's just not gonna happen. Same as for you, whatever terms that we put in, they're not gonna tell our terms to the other buyers, okay? All right, number 14, where it comes to dual agency. Dual agency is another one that should have been covered in uh, your working with real estate agents brochure, but I, I'll take a few seconds to go in on this one, okay? So let's say you find a house, you like it, we go in, put an offer, we go in a contract. And let's say the seller works for the same firm in the same office that I do. So what happens, the firm that I work for just became a dual agent. And basically all this means is that the commission that was going to me previously, all 6% or whatever the agreed upon commission is, is now going to Keller Williams altogether because the buyer as well as the seller is being represented both by the same firm, okay? Now, on a more micro level, let's say we find a house that you like and we go on a contract, and let's say I'm representing the seller as well. So I personally just became a dual agent in this process. You as the buyer and the seller on the other, on the other side, you both have the option to allow dual agency, okay? And if you choose not to allow dual agency, which is perfectly your right to do so, my broker in charge will bring in another realtor from within the office and have him or her represent either you or the seller within the transaction, and then I will go back to being an advocate either for you or the seller, okay? Now also, keep in mind that on the next page, you have the option 
um, to check that you will allow dual agency. But if we find ourselves in a situation and you want to change your mind and say, hey, I don't like this, I want to, uh, I don't want to allow dual agency, you can actually go back and make that change. We'll do the necessary paperwork and then we'll keep the ball rolling. All right. So also in regards to dual agency, um, I kind of touched on this earlier, but when you're looking at F, you'll see the dual agency compensation. And again, this is where this is basically saying that all of the commission would now be going to the same firm. I still get my same percentage. It's just all going to the same firm now. OK, number 15, where it says uh, mediation. Essentially, what mediation is, uh, we had a disagreement and we could not find any resolution. And when I say we, I mean me and you as the buyer versus the seller as well as the other real estate agent. So if we have a disagreement, we will do our best to uh, come to some sort of resolution uh, at our level. And then if not, we'll go talk to our brokers in charge. And if they can't do anything, then we'll go to mediation, which is essentially court. So we'll go to court, we'll, we'll plead our side, they'll plead their side, the judge will listen, and whatever he or she says is what we have to roll with. Um, I've been in a few situations where we have had disagreements before, but never have I had to get a broker in charge um, involved, never have I had to go to court. And, uh, you know, knock on wood, okay? So I will let you know that uh, most realtors will do everything in their power to avoid mediation, okay? So um, don't let that scare you. I just always like to point that out as a possibility, all right? So number 16, where it says entire agreement, uh, changes and termination. Uh, there's a couple of ways to kind of attach this one here, to attack this one. Um, the good thing about real estate, everything is negotiable. And you're going to sign a lot of documents during the process. So if there's a change that needs to be made, as long as all necessary parties are in agreement to that change, uh, we can make the change, okay? Also, as it relates to termination, if for whatever reason um, you're not getting a good vibe or a good feeling during the process and you just want to terminate the agreement, uh, you're more well within your right to do so, okay? And we could go a little bit more into detail about that when we talk one-on-one, -on -one, but that is an option for you, okay? So moving on to page five. Uh, where you see number 17 and number 18. I like to loop these together. Uh, both of these bullets are relatively new. I think they just got added within the last two years or so, but um, where they're talking about the surveillance and uh, use of photographs and video. When you walk into somebody's home, you are allowed to take photos, you are allowed to take videos, unless the seller says otherwise. If he, she, or they says that uh, they do not want you guys taking any videos, then we can't take any videos and we can't take any uh, photos, okay? Conversely, keep in mind that you're walking into somebody's home. So there's a good chance that you may actually be recording, getting recorded, sorry. Now, to the best of my understanding, uh, sellers and homeowners are not allowed to record your voice. They can only record visual only. Uh, but I always like to tell my buyers just to be mindful of what you say when you walk into somebody's home because you don't know if they are if they aren't recording, okay? They don't have to tell us that they're recording. Also, when you're walking through somebody's home and if you're recording and all that good stuff, you're allowed to uh, uh, record what you can see. But if you have to open it up, such as like a cabinet or a wine cellar or a medicine drawer, uh, no, we do not allow that, okay? You will not take any pictures of that. And for the most part, uh, depending on exactly what it is, we're not going to allow you to open those doors anyway, okay? But if you can walk in the home, whatever you can see without touching anything, as long as the seller has okayed it, you can, you can record away, all right? Number 19, if you've paid attention to some of my videos in the past, uh, you'll know that I've touched on this. Um, I want to say in phase three of the uh, home buying process, okay? So the wire fraud warning, what happens once you get the clear to close uh, from the bank and the attorney, the attorney will email you a... Um, it should be an encrypted email with wiring instructions uh, to send to them if you end up having to bring money to close. Okay, so when you get that email, I need you to contact one of two people, either myself or the attorney uh, themselves, okay? And I need you to verify that this email came from the attorney. And the reason for that is we've had a lot of... Um, 
clients clients get scammed in the past because they got that email saying, hey, wire your funds to this bank account and then we'll be clear to close. They do so and they come to find out it was a fraudulent email. So to avoid that, whenever you get that email, let me know or let the attorney know and ask one of us to verify and we'll verify it for you, okay? So moving on to page six. Uh, page six is just nothing but admin information, okay? Uh, it's my name, it's my phone number, it's my signature, uh, it's my work address, and same with you. It's your name, your signature, uh, your email address, and just other contact information. Uh, you'll verify that and we'll be good to go. And this information, for the most part, is for the attorney, okay? And uh, that's pretty much it. That is the exclusive buyer agency agreement. Okay, so if you have any other questions, feel free to uh, email me or comment on this video or shoot me a text message, okay? But I um, just want to say thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time, alright? Stay safe.